Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. First video since I'm back from GDC, and damn, we've got tons of stuff going on. For this video, I'm going to focus on some champion buffs which are coming out, which honestly, on the face of it, look insane. So we've got a couple of champion buffs. I also just want to draw your attention to this new thing. I've not done this yet myself, but Raid's fifth anniversary quiz. Everything I'm seeing about this is do it, you get some really cool rewards. So from what I'm seeing, it's like energy books and all sorts. Yeah, definitely do this. I think if you get like five out of seven questions right, um, in fact, should we do it quickly now? Let's do it quickly now, then we'll get into the, yeah, answer five out of seven right, you get energy, legendary book, five-star chicken, a barrel, all of the good stuff. So I know there's a, a post about that on the HH Gaming website. If you want to find out some info, then go and check that out. Damn, yeah, just come back from GDC. It was an absolute bonkers trip. Really, really good for Fateless stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed the content that I'd done before I went out and kind of like back to it as normal from today. We've got here two champions that are going to be rebalanced in the next uh, patch, which I'm guessing is coming next week. First one up is one of the worst legendaries for, for most content in the game. Although she did get a little bit of a play, I guess increase in play in the last Cursed City when she was pretty good for Amia. So uh, that was interesting. Anyway, Minaya generally left in the vault. She's also one of the token trader champs. So for the ultra whales out there, maybe she's been picked up anyway. I actually don't have her somehow after all the time I've been playing. She's got kind of like good speed and good stats, but her kit is just so healing based without really any other uh, support for your team. Uh, place continuous heal here, a chunky heal here, and an okay hit on the A2 um, with a good chance of placing that heal reduction on all enemies. As I say, that's really good for Amius, but wasn't really that useful outside of that. And then she's got here another heal um, block debuffs for two, two turns on champions under increased defense. So just felt like it was a little bit too conditional for a legendary champ. And yeah, it doesn't really get a lot of look in. She was kind of okay when paired with Coronar, if you've got Coronar as well, because of the revive. But again, all the good stuff was on Coronar rather than on her. And then she had speed in all battles. So let's see what's going down with her. So it says here, with this rebalance, we have focused on improving Manaya's healing capabilities, which should strengthen her role as a reliable and versatile healer suitable for different areas of the game. Forget about a 10k flat heal on her A2. She will now heal by 30% of Manaya's HP, okay? which is good. If you think about 10k heal versus 30% of HP, which would be more like a 30k heal if she's built well. No, that's, that's a massive difference. Anyway, let's go through the actual changes here. So Mending Ways, which is the A2, is still going to be attacks an enemy, heals this champion, heals this champion and the ally with the lowest HP by 30% of hers. So that's the big change there, which is better, honestly. Um, and then 75%, this is all the same, of adding heal reduction, but also brings a leech debuff on the same skill as well. These debuffs cannot be resisted if Coronar is on the same team. That part is really solid. Leech is pretty solid you know, in terms of giving your team a bit more healing throughout general content. The heal increase is better. So all of that is, is not bad, actually. Okay, so quite a... Decent change to her A2. Let's check out the A3 then. So this one is pretty interesting as well. So we've got here, heals all allies by 40% max HP, puts block debuffs for two turns on a champion under increased defense. Yeah, it was really specific around when that could happen. And then if they're fully healed, they also gain a shield as well, which generally did happen because of the big juicy heal we got for the A3. So the change here is heals all allies by 40%. That's the same. Places block debuffs on all allies for two turns. And there's nothing here that says you need increased defense to make that happen. So big heal, block debuffs for two turns across the whole team. Still on a four turn cooldown. And you still get the shield part of the mechanic as well. It's, it's actually a significant change. It's actually a pretty significant change. And damn, that... That might make her way more desirable, I think. Because block debuffs for two turns is fairly, fairly unique. And the fact that it's done now across the whole team, I actually think that's going to make her way more desirable. So the two changes there, getting leech across all enemies, getting block debuffs for your whole team without that kind of like requirement of increased defense. 
And then when we get to the passive here, I, I think they missed a trick with the passive, honestly. So they've we've got a turn meter fill right now, then you've got a kind of cool element to the coronar thing. This is all about her dying, right? When when she dies, everyone gets a turn meter fill. Compare it to someone like a Morley, when she gets hit, everyone gets a turn meter fill. Yeah, so uh, what they've changed this to is still the, the, the turn meter fill when she dies. They've added in a heal when she dies as well by 20% of this champion's max HP. And then the rest of it is the same. Just feel like they've missed a trick. Like relying on her to be dead to get these things to happen, you just never want her to be dead. Like you want her to be doing her kit. So I don't know. I, you know, in stuff like Arena, no one's going to kill her first anyway. Why would you? It just makes no sense to like, I don't know. It just feels like they've missed a trick there. Like if they'd, if they just changed the element of when this 20% turn meter fill happened, made it a bit more like Morley, or, you know, it just, I feel like they've missed a trick with this bit. But the rest of the kit change is decent. And I do think with the A3 now being good and the A2 being more solid, she's going to get some playtime. So I guess let me know what you think. So the second one, I mean, this is a change. I'll tell you that now. This is a change. This is probably someone that very few people have got. In fact, I'm going to see, do I have multiple copies here? I've got no idea because I literally don't use it at all. No, I've just got the one. I've just got the one. So I'm not going to suddenly have like a plus four kicking around or something like that with crazy empowerment. But there you go. Um, for my showcase anyway. So after the following changes, you will love seeing Queen Eva's performance in all types of arena. Um, of, of course, if you've got her on your team, we've increased damage for all of her skills, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's go into it. So what was the main problem with her? She behaved like a an epic that was just a high damage dealer. She was a great campaign farmer because of her A3, because she got a reset on this cooldown. And then if you could build her to do enough damage, the block revive is kind of decent, but it's just incredibly hard to do that. She's incredibly difficult to keep alive with a squishy setup. So as soon as you got past like level 15 dungeons, for example, she was just a poor option to be bringing into content. So let's see what's going on. Autorize, which is our A1 here. So this has gone up to 70%. Obviously buffs then to 100%. So they've now changed the A1 so that it's 100% chance of putting heal reduction on. And they've added block buffs on that as well. So it's now heal reduction and block buffs, which does make it is that better for Amius or not? Maybe not, actually. The heal reduction is great for Amius, but the block buffs is a bit dodgy. Um, also, they've given her an extra 15% chance of crits. That's across all skills. So she will only need 85% crit rate to get her, her max crit away, which is actually kind of cool. Um, ancient curse here, attacks an enemy two times, same thing, ignores 50% of the target's defense with this now. And she gets the extra 15% chance to crit. That is now going to absolutely smack. That is going to smack with the block revive. I don't know if her stats are changing in any way, so I don't know if she's going to be easier to keep alive, but that's pretty good change with this skill at least. Doesn't mean that this skill is just going to kill someone, like nuke them down, and she will block their revive. That's better. Um, then we've got energy drain. It just says damage increased. So we don't know what the damage uh, increases by. She still doesn't get a passive. Ah, oh, man, if they'd just taken it one step further and given her a passive, like a skull crown type of passive so that she's got just an extra chance of survivability to get those skills away, that would be a, a, like a massive change. But as it is, definitely, I think, got a chance to come out of the vault. Much easier to build with only needing 85% crit. 50% ignore defense is massive on the A2. And then a damage boost here. I don't know, guys. Let me know what you think. I think the Queen Eva change could actually be really worthwhile. Um, the Minaya one, I'm still not certain. I'd love to know your thoughts on it. Anyway. I've been Hell Hades. I'm back and I'll see you soon.